presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the story The Third Man, with Zither music by Anton Karras. You know, I've tried everything in my time. Just about everything. Confidence rackets, smuggling, black market. Once, believe it or not, I even tried going straight. And here's the story of what happened to me then. It's called The Hard Way. Stick around. this, Harry. The good old days is over and past. Things here in Europe is not what they was, not like just after the war. The cops were one thing, the border police and like that. They're all getting so sharp, a fella might just as well be trying to a living back home. Better. So what is this all about, Mo? Well, you want to pull out of the racket? Okay. If you want to sell me your piece of the plan. Harry, I don't want to sell you nothing. You know somehow I didn't think so? Harry, why'd you say that? Well, buying and selling isn't in your character, old man. Picking up and letting lay is the nearest you're ever likely to come to legitimate commercial procedure and uh, picking up... Legitimate, that's the word, Harry. That's what we got to get to be. The international cops, like I tell you, Harry, is entirely too organized. You know Swifty Sloan and English Everett used to fly nylons? Yeah. Very smart little combination I was, huh? Well, what happened to him? What happened? Everett makes a jump into England last night. And the parachute didn't open? You know that place on the coast of Cornwall, Harry, that was you and me first developed like? What about it? As safe a little drop as you can find, huh, Harry? Six miles from a road, no houses, nothing but header. Well, what do you what do you think they got in the header Thursday night when Everett jumps? Birds? Cops. That's what they got in the header now, Harry. That's where half of Scotland Yard is spending their evenings. Everett gets out from under the parachute. It looks like a surprise party. And as for Swifty, they got a couple of fast Coast Guard jobs that follows them all the way across the channel to Dieppe. Then comes the French planes, and even a fellow comes from Belgium. By the time Swifty is forced out, it looks like an international conference. Yeah, it does seem rather discouraging. Uh, I yeah. tell you, the good times is finished. Pickens was real nicer after the war. There was opportunities, but not anymore. Europe is getting entirely too commercialized. All right, Mo. What do you suggest? Uh, Want to go back home? To the States, Harry? Eventually, yes. But right now, there's maybe still too many people looking for both of us. Well? Meanwhile, we gotta live, Harry. That old man is the first objection to going straight that jumps into my mind. Well, Harry, we got the plane. It's a pretty good little plane. Well, Harry, easy you know. to sell more. No. It flies okay, but it's yeah. a little bit like you and me. It's been around. Yeah, it's it's been heard around. the chimes at midnight. We can shop around for a sucker, but what do we do in the interim, old man, for groceries? What would you say to this, Harry? How does this strike you? The Imperial Safeways Charter Flight Company, Incorporated. Flying for private charter? Is that what you're driving at? Sure, it's a business, Harry. Yeah. A nice, quiet, steady little business. And no trouble with the cops. <laughs> Nice, quiet, steady little business, and no trouble. Hmm. Little did we know. Well, anyway, that's how Safeway's Plane Charger Incorporated was born. I bought myself a cap that said head pilot over the visor and sat down with Mo on our little farm. A nice sort of hideaway it was, near the French border, chosen during more adventurous days for its remoteness, to wait for official permission. With our reputation, that wasn't too easy to fix. But finally, the phone rang, and sure enough, it was the brass down in Nice. Would I fly over for a talk? 
Well, Nice was about a 20-minute run from our private, uh, very private field, and pretty soon there I was, twisting my new cap nervously and trying to look as honest as possible for the benefit of some official or other who didn't, I uh, must say, look very impressed. Lime? Uh, b- uh, yes, sir? We have a dossier here in France covering your suspected activities since mm. 1946. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I say suspected lime. Because we never actually caught you. Uh, no, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. We have also reports from Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Holland, and the Republic of San Marino. Hmm. Well, they never caught me either. As you say. Well, here is how I figure out the situation. Uh, yes, sir. You are requesting the right to operate a plane charter company. That's right, yes. You say that you propose to carry passengers or even freight yes. cleared in the proper way through the proper channels. Uh, yes. Why? I beg your pardon? I ask you, why? Well, uh, it's a business. It's a nice, steady little business. Not as good as smuggling cigarettes, however. Uh, well, I really wouldn't know about that, sir. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no. Now then, mm. as I say, I figure the situation has two possible explanations. Yes, sir. Either you really want to operate an honest charter service with your little plane... Well, that's it, sir. That's exactly the... And here I want you to follow me very carefully. Yes, sir. Or... Or you are plotting something so deep, so sly, so crazy... Oh, sir, how can you think that? Under the circumstances, I have no choice but to comply with your request. Thank you, sir. We are letting you start this charter company line. We are permitting you to begin. Oh, thank you so much. I but can... we are keeping our eye on you, all of us, the police of every country in Western Europe. We are watching for hanky-panky, Monsieur Lyon. And then the very first sign of hanky-panky, the very first whiff of suspicion of hanky-panky, you will wish that you had not come here, that you had never applied for your first commercial license. Indeed, Monsieur Lyon, you will wish that you had never been born. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't all like right, it. What, Harry? You I got your like papers it. and all like that. What's your gripe? I don't like the official attitude as regards this little caper, Mo. All we got to do is break one routine little regulation, and we've had don't it. Don't be such a pessimist. It's true, old man. It's absolutely true. One little slip. That's all they're waiting for. Don't forget they know us. They're just waiting now for the chance to crack down on us for everything we got away with before. Start reading the fine print and all the rules and regulations, my old friend of my youth. Somewhere there's a little joker about tipping your right wing to Matterhorn or flying south on the first Sunday after Michaelmas, something like that, on which the vigilant police of Europe will manage to fulfill their fondest dream and send us off to break stones on that work farm in Sardinia. Ah, uh, Harry, you I what? tell you, Mo, we never should have gone straight. Quitting the racket, that's okay. But we should have retired. Not gone into legitimate business. It's too dangerous. Then there was the problem of getting customs. The tourist season was just about over, and anyway, it turned out that almost everybody prefers traveling in those big, comfortable, fast airliners. Don't ask me why, they just do. When there wasn't any more tinkering needed on our little flivver mo who was essentially the maintenance staff, ground crew, and administrative wing of Safeway's Charter Flights Incorporated, took a slight powder on me and went up to the farm. He said he had work to do, and although I couldn't think what that could be, I also couldn't think of a good reason why I should make him hang around the airport with me. About a week after that, I got my first customer. Your name is Lime. That's right, yes. My name is Butterboy. Well, Butterboy's paper Butterboy. cups and containers. You oh, got yes. a plane, yes. the rain. An airplane, yes. Yes, sir, an airplane. Mr. Butterboy, just, just yes. Uh, where would you like to go? Is that your plane over there? Right, Mr. Butterboy. There she is, sir. Sweet see. little job. Yes, she is. Butterboy. Needs a bit of paint, of course, but yes. reliable. Well, that's, that's good. a plane, Mr. Butterboy, that will definitely get you there. Well, I'm glad to And hear. where is it exactly you'd like to get? Uh, Zurich, uh, Switzerland, but uh, maybe I'd better wait for the regular flight. No, it's uh, all booked up, you well, know, for weeks ahead. Yeah. We'll, we'll make you a very good rate, Mr. Butterboy. Uh, where are your bags? Uh, how hmm. many can you take in that thing there? Oh, four easy and five in a pinch. How many are you? Uh, when can you leave? Well, now, if you like, and after uh, the... Don't you uh, have to get clearance for Switzerland? Oh, sure, but that won't take long. I'll just go well, to the okay, traffic. Lime, and... you go ahead and get set. I get up on my own. I got to tend to. I'll meet you out there by your plane in a half hour. Is that too soon? For Safeway's charter flights, Mr. Butterboy. 
nothing is too soon. I got my international clearance and was all fixed up with traffic right on schedule. There was some kind of excitement going on in the passenger's waiting room, but I didn't investigate. <laughs> if only I had. Well, too late now. An attendant came up with a message. Monsieur Lai? Yes, what is it? You're the plane Monsieur Buttball has chartered. Butter, butter boy. Yes, this is the plane he chartered. What of it? He wants you to go on ahead without him. What do you mean, go on without him if... If he's chartering the plane... I know, I know, but this butterball is very eccentric. eccentric. We've had some dealings with him before. You must just do as he says. So he wants to charter the plane, not to take him to Zurich. Well, when do I get paid? He told me to give you this. Mm, thanks, and uh, what do I do when I get to Zurich? Not take him back? No, you go only as far as Paris and wait. He'll meet you there tomorrow. What? Well, what do you mean? What's wrong, Monsieur Lyon? Well, nothing. It, well, you just gave me a thousand bucks. Is it too little? Too little. It's almost twice what I expected in an ordinary... I told person. you, monsieur, this butterball is eccentric in extreme. Uh, yes, oh, you are to leave right away. That is a condition. If you leave within the next two minutes, there will be another thousand waiting for you in Paris. One and a half minutes after that, your Uncle Harry was airborne. Nice evening, clear, still, full moon. Didn't like the look of the weather up ahead. After about half an hour, I was alone with my thoughts. Or rather, I thought I was alone with my thoughts. Then gradually, it began to dawn on me that I wasn't the only one in the plane. Somebody was sitting behind me. Somebody had been hidden before, evidently, under my duffel bag in the parachute. It was kind of spooky. It was, well, it was, among other things, a girl on a stowaway. And a very attractive stowaway at that. In a moment, Orson Welles returns as Harry Lyme, the third man. Kiddies, I'll have to admit that although I found myself in the course of a fairly long and extremely varied career in some pretty odd positions, this was by all odds the oddest. Fifteen hundred feet over sea level with a doorway who looked as though she belonged on a calendar instead of in an aeroplane. What are you doing here? Well? Oh, so you don't feel like answering. Oh, come up in front so I can look at you. Just climb over the seat. I can't leave the stick. The weather's going to be bumpy over this mountain. You heard me. Get up here in front. Why should I? Because I say so. Suppose I don't want to. Well, look, is, is this the first time you've ever been in a plane? Answer me. Yes. Are you coming up in front or not? I don't see why I should. Okay, then start holding on to your head. What do you mean? We're going to do a little stunting. Seems that way, doesn't it? Thinking you're not used to it. All right, come up in front. I want to look at you. No, I'd rather sit back here. Oh, 
Okay, here we go again. No, no. No what? Don't stop that awful diving again. I'll obey you. I'll do anything you Just say. Just climb oh, up me. over the seat, honey. Sit down next to me. It isn't often I get a stowaway on this airline. Besides, I'd like to see who I'm talking to. All right. Here I come. You asked for it. Ouch! What's wrong? I broke my head. Well, just slide down in the seat. That's right. Hey. Just a second. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not going oh. to take another dive. I'm just taking off my coat. What for? Oh, thanks. Well, don't just put it around your shoulders. Put it on. not going to get any warmer. We've got to make altitude over those mountains. You're not so bad at that. What do you mean at that? Well, as they say, I mean. You're not so bad as they say. Who says I'm bad? Everybody. Oh, what do they say about you? Oh, I'm not notorious like you. Oh, well, maybe not, honey, but I, I never stowed away in a private plane. It strikes me it's a good way to start building up a reputation. Well, it's not my fault. It just happened that way. Amnesia? What's that? Amnesia, loss of memory. I don't understand. I'm asking you if you lost your memory. Well, why should I do that? Oh, I don't know. It happens. People lose things, you know. What kind of a girl do you think I am? You want an absolutely frank and candid answer to that question? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? You have a very complicated way of talking. I merely asked you if you wanted me to answer your question truthfully. What question? You asked it. You asked yes, the question. Yes, but I can't remember what it was. Amnesia. No doubt of it. Amnesia. There you go again with those big words. You asked me what kind of a girl did I think you were, and I asked you if you wanted me to give you an answer to that question which was truthful or merely polite. Honey, I haven't formed any definite opinion, but... How long before we're going to get into the next town? What do you mean the next town, the next country? Well... A couple of hours, that is, if all goes well. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't like the look of the sky up there over the mountains. We're going to be running in some nasty weather. You mean we'll all be killed? Well, let's hope not, kid. I'm kind of a strange couple, you and I, if they ever bother to sift through the wreckage. No, I just mean we might be late. Oh. I might have to fly around on the outside of that storm. But by the way, what's your name? Why should I tell you? Well, why shouldn't you? Why should I? Young lady, this is without any question the most insane, the most inane, the most meaningless, the most idiotic conversation I've ever held with a human being 1,500 feet over sea level or anywhere else. Oh, now you're cross. I knew you'd get cross. Shut up. Why? Because I'm tired of talking to you, that's why. All right, that's your attitude. Hmm. One thing I don't understand is... How you ever managed to get into the plane to begin with? Well, it was dark. Nobody was looking. Evidently not. But how did you know that this was my plane? They pointed it out to us when we came to the airport. Mm. They said this was the plane of Harry Lyon, the famous smuggler that nobody would ever been able to erase. Oh, they did. And that's why you picked this plane instead of one of the big airlines. If I was a smuggler, you figured I could just well be smuggling you. Is that it? Now, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything, just flying a plane. Perfectly normal flight. Nan gives me a thousand bucks not to take him to Paris, not to take him to Zurich or wherever it is. Yeah, but you're turning it around, around or something, right. aren't I don't you? like that weather up ahead. Also, I don't like what the boys at the airport in Paris are likely to do to me when they find you on the plane. What are they likely to do? I don't know, but it won't be too pleasant for me. I'm trying to build up a good reputation, trying to prove that I've reformed. <laughs> Look what's happened to me on my first legitimate flight. Well, there's no law against me, is there? Well, maybe not, but there ought to be. So, where are we going instead of Paris? Where do you think? Not back where we started. You got some other country in mind? No, but what's the use of going back where we started? That's no fun. And besides, besides, I'll get into trouble. You'll get into trouble? What about me? Listen, when you are a smuggler, didn't you have a place of your own where you, where you kept your own plane? I still do. It's a farm. A friend and I live on it. But up to now, we never paid much attention to the crops. Uh, oh, you mean... Obviously, that's the best place to take me, don't you think? Yes, obviously. And then what? Oh, I don't know. Uh, th then we'll see. Well, you've got some ideas, kid. I don't. Oh, well, I don't belong in that girl's school. That's one thing, sure. I don't belong there, and I'm not going... But about those ideas... What school? I'm telling you, you're still young enough to be going to school. A minor yet, aren't you? Now I know I'm going to jail. Not if we're careful. 
Now, about this ID... I don't suppose you've got a passport concealed anywhere on your person. Oh, don't be silly. Now, about this ID... We'll pick up the new ideas later. Now, let's examine some of the old ones. Getting in this plane, for instance... The reason I got in the plane was so that I wouldn't have to go to this awful finishing school where everybody speaks French and German. By the German. way, what is your Who name? Who wants to speak French and German? Not me. I want to get married. Well, kid, you'll make somebody a lovely wife. Now, that's what he says. My fiancé, I mean... We're secretly engaged because my uncle doesn't approve. You see, my uncle's uncle. very old-fashioned. Now, uncle. about this idea, your uncle, I was... We're getting somewhere, maybe. Finally, I can identify you, at least. Tell me about your uncle. There's hmm? nothing to tell. He's just an uncle. He's the one who wanted to take me off to that school in Zurich. The school in Zurich? Wait a minute. Don't tell me your uncle is... Warfield yeah. Butterboy, the paper cup king. But he gave me a thousand dollars to... No, that was me gave you the thousand dollars. You? I tipped the attendant in the airport to bring it to you with that message. Now, about my... Where did you I... get the thousand dollars? Well, I just borrowed it while he wasn't looking. Well, who wasn't looking? Warfield Butterboy, the paper cup king. I told you that already. He's awful rich, my uncle Warfield is. That's why I thought you ought to kidnap me. What? And... Kidnap me? You know on that farm of yours. Uncle Warfield would pay almost anything to get me to that girl's school, and you could refuse to hand me over without getting a million dollars or something. Hmm. You know how that works. Holding for ransom, they call it. Then I'd have the money to marry Alba. Marry Alba. Well, what's wrong now? Well, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Go on. Go right on. Well, Albert is my fiancé. Oh. He won't marry me if I don't have any money. Oh. But he isn't a bit unreasonable. Mm. I'm sure he'll let you keep some of the ransom money for yourself. Shut up, fasten your seatbelt. We're coming down. Now where? Oh, you mean to the ground? That's right, honey. To the ground. To the farm where I'm going to be kidnapped. Of course, if we go down, we're going to the ground. What's wrong? You think I'm stupid? <laughs> sat down in front of Moe's, I told little Miss Featherhead to keep out of sight for a minute. I knew Moe. I wanted to break things to him gently. A fine friend, a fine friend you are. Now I listen, must say, listen, listen, listen nothing. You Mo, promised Mo. me, Harry. Yes, you did, Harry. You give promise. me a promise. He was going straight, Harry. He was going to keep us strictly out of trouble. And now look at you, what you want well, to say. I, I don't know what you're yeah, talking you about. You know what I'm about the worst. About. Is you don't know what I'm talking about, huh, Harry. I'm surprised that you open that place. Yes, Mo. Yeah, but... oh, okay, open it, I say. There. Now then, come on out, little girl. Little girl? What do you know about a little girl? You went and put the snatch on some poor little child back at the airport. Now, I, wait a don't minute. Don't try moment. to lie about it. They phone me. Come on out, honey. I'll protect you. This, this... Hey. Wait a minute. This is a dame. <laughs> I didn't wait around to make any explanations. I just introduced them. Hyacinth, her name was Hyacinth Butterboy, and left the two of them on the farm to discuss it between themselves. Twenty minutes later, I was back in the airport in Nice with Uncle Warfield. Well, all I can see is, Lime, you have my sympathy. That niece of mine is really a caution. Yes, she's quite an original young lady, no doubt of that. I came back to assure uh, you, you, Mr. Butterboy. You need to assure me anything. When she gave me the slip, and the attendant here told me about that phony message. Mm. I knew she'd stowed away, and you in for some trouble. You know what happened while you were flying back from that farm of yours? No. What happened now? She phoned up the airport here and said she was being held for ransom. Said she'd settled for half a million, trying to disguise her voice, but it's a teeny bit hard with her southern accent. I knew, and I said I'd pay her half a million if she'd stay away. <laughs> well, of course, I, I, I was just joking. If I was the mother, I'd get her packed off safe to that finishing school, and I will, too. Even if it finishes me. <laughs> now then, let's get started. Started? Where to, Mr. Butterboy? Started for where? Well, we gotta go and pick up little house and do it. Well, you do, Mr. Butterboy. You're her uncle. I'm not related to her, and I don't well, want to... Well, now, looky here. I'll pay you small. No, sir. Me. Thank you very much, Mr. Butterboy. Yeah, but whatever I'm... your price is, it isn't enough. That's being legitimate the hard but way. Miss no buts, Mr. Butterboy. Harry Lyme returns in just a moment.
Now, Harry Lyme. Well, by the time Uncle Warfield got Hyacinth Butterboy safely tucked away in that high-class reform school in Zurich, Moe, poor soul, was just about ready for a mental home. He'd have to keep her company, of course, till the paper cup king came and took her away. Oh, and by the way, she stole $60,000 from it. Uh, from Mo, I mean. That's what he'd been doing up there in the farm. Printing it. He was very put out about having to start making all that money again. What Hyacinth did with all that bogus dough is another story, but I never want to hear it. Got enough troubles as it is. (laughs) 